awesome sauce. Scene one, Apple, take one. What is up, everybody? So, I've got some repairs here. I've got two different boards uh, that were sent to me. And today I'm going to take a look at these guys and see if I can go ahead and fix what I can fix. So the first board we have here is a Data East uh, board. And this one right here goes to a pinball machine. Now, I was told that there's two transistors and a diode out. Okay. Now, question is, which ones? I have no idea. Um, as well as, how did the person know that there was something that was actually out on it? Um, when they don't appear like they were ever removed. Because you usually have to test these out of circuit, generally. But anyway, that's what I was told, so we're going to have to find what's going on with this guy. The good news is, most of the stuff that's on here, we probably aren't even going to need a schematic for, because it's pretty straightforward when it comes to the testing of it. Okay, so what I've done is I've desoldered one side of all of the diodes, okay? And from there I went through and took my tool and I just kind of popped up one side so it's not touching any part of the traces. Okay, so now these are essentially removed from the board. We can test them and we'll know for sure these are bad or if they're good. When doing this, you have to make sure that you don't miss any. Okay, so we do have a couple of small guys right here, a couple of small diodes. Um, you have to make sure you don't miss any of those things. Now, things that you generally don't have to replace, generally, okay, and if you do have to replace them, you'll be able to tell, okay, resistors, okay, you generally won't have to, okay, because generally when a resistor goes bad, it opens up, the resistance becomes greater, it doesn't become smaller, it becomes greater, generally that's the case, and usually when you end up seeing a resistor go bad, it'll just be burnt up, you'll see it, it's going to be, okay, generally you don't have to test those. Things like these kinds of capacitors right here, generally you don't have to replace those guys. Same thing like with this and this, generally you won't have to. In electrolytic it's possible, but in a case like this, um, and because of the age of it, probably not. Although it's possible, okay? These types of transistors, yeah, these ones you'll have to test, okay? And uh, these types of transistors you're going to have to test. Now these I've loosened already, I've desoldered those. We're gonna test those first. And after I test those, I'm going to end up doing these, and then these, then pretty much everything will be tested on this board except for these two guys, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to put our handy-dandy uh, multimeter here onto diode. Makes a nice little high-pitched noise. So when testing diodes, one side we should get a reading. When we flip the leads, we shouldn't get a reading. And I really would prefer to use my fluke meter, but... I'm too lazy to walk into the other room and get it. So, let's go ahead and test this one first. You're going to see that there is a line on one side. If I put the positive here and the negative here, we should get nothing. Okay. When I flip these two, we should get something. And we do. And generally, you're going to see it's like a 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So you, that's generally what you're going to see with diodes. Okay. Same thing. We'll come over here and test this. Okay. Now, if you get a reading on both sides, the diode's bad. Sometimes the diode will give you a very, very high reading or a very low reading, and it's, it's suspect at that point. You should compare those numbers to the equivalent uh, diode. So, you know, in this case, if we have one right here and it's, given, and it's reading good, and it's given us a certain number, and we test this one, it's given us a way different number. One of those is suspect. But, you know, if you test these and they're the same, whichever ones are the closest are the ones that are probably okay compared to the ones that uh, obviously are, are different, okay? So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna test this. Nothing, nothing. Flip them and do the same thing. 0.5, 0.5. So as far as I'm concerned, those diodes right there, those large ones are good. And the larger the diode, usually the larger the current that is uh, going through it. 
And a lot of times you'll end up seeing diodes like these when they're trying to use them as a rectifier, you know. Um, all right, so we've got those. We know that those are good. We have one right here. I don't know if you can see it, but we're going to test this guy. Okay, nothing, as we should expect. About fine. Okay, that one's fine. We got one over here. Same thing. And it's important to test these when they're out of the circuit because electricity always takes a path of least resistance, right? So if this is in the circuit and I'm testing it, it might find another way back to uh, the, the other lead. And then it'll say, oh yeah, this is a bad diode, when in fact it is not. Well, I have just tested every diode in this board and they're all fine. And if you just go in there and you shotgun and you just start replacing all of them, you're wasting time and you're wasting money, right? And at the end of it, you haven't fixed anything, you know? Um, the diodes in this are fine. So with that being said, we can go to the next thing, which is gonna be the transistors. So before I do that, I'm gonna put all these back in place, re-solder them. Okay, so the diodes are back in and I double checked for cold solder joints or whatever, just, you know, bad connections with the um, uh, diodes. This particular one right here, the trace, um, was kind of damaged and it was hard to get a good solder joint. So I scraped some, bent the tab over, and then soldered it to the, the trace this direction. If that wouldn't have worked, I would have put a wire from here to here. I would have jumped one um, to make sure that that was uh, legit. And if I come over here now and I, I hit this and hit that, I know I have a good connection. Okay, That was the only one that was a little off. So transistors um, are generally, you can think of transistors a lot of times almost like two diodes, right? That have kind of been uh, pointing at one another, you know, in a way. So what we can do is, and I've got a transistor tester that will test all these a little bit more thoroughly, but I'm gonna show you can do it with a multimeter. So in, in this particular case, we have our base collector and then our emitter. The collector should also be hooked up to the heat sink back here, which it is, okay? Very good. When we go the collector and emitter, we should get nothing. And we don't get anything. When I flip these guys around, we should get nothing, okay? That is correct. That is correct, okay? Now, when we go to the base and the collector, now when we go to the base and the collector, we should get something. And we go to the emitter, we should get something, okay? But when we flip these around, it shouldn't be like that. And it isn't. That transistor should be fine. Now, <clears throat> not all transistors are tested this way, okay? Okay, so I've been going around and I've been testing the transistors and, and I, I want to show you. Um, so we're sitting there and we're testing this guy. So doing it just like we have been. If I come over here and I touch this, nothing and nothing, right? Come over here and I touch this, nothing and nothing. If I come over here, we end up getting our, our 0.5 like you would usually see just like with a diode, right? Flip these guys, we should see nothing. Okay. This is good, all right? Now, we take this one, and we'll, we'll come over here to the center. We're getting zero, and we're getting that. Zero, that's wrong. This thing's toast, okay? This is bad, and I'm glad we were able to find one that was bad, okay? So that's something I have to order. We found one that's bad, but we can't assume that this is the only thing that's wrong with it because I don't know what the symptoms are, right? I'm just, I was just handed a board and stole one diode was bad or a couple diodes and transistor. We tested all the diodes. Diodes said that they, everything was fine, okay? So the next thing for me to do is now I have to go and I have to start testing all of these transistors that are here, okay? Um, there might not be anything wrong with these at all, but the reality is, is I, I don't know. Um, only way to know for sure is to test, okay? But we have tested the diodes and we know that the diodes are good, okay? We've tested all of the transistors, the major ones at least at this point. We found one that was bad, okay? 
And we have a couple, of, uh, two here, that um, when I was testing them, it was kind of giving me some readings I don't like. Um, and they might be just fine, they might be. But just for the sake of safety, I'm gonna order a couple of those. Because they're only like a dollar, so it's not that big of a deal, right? You're gonna spend more on shipping than you are on the part. And you might as well do it. If you're getting a reading that's a little, if, if it makes your spider senses tingle, just replace it, okay? But now I'm gonna start re uh, doing these and you, you test them the exact same way. But the base, the emitter, and the collector are in different positions. Now some of these are PNP and some of them are NPN and whatnot. So what I'm gonna do just to speed up the process is I'm just gonna end up taking these and putting them in my transistor tester. And it tells me it's okay. And it tells me that it's a PNP, right? So um, this is a lot quicker, but this will tell you one, two, three, the, the emitter, the base, and the collector. So the emitter, the base, and the collector, okay? And uh, this one is fine. And this is really the fastest way for me to do it like this instead of, you know, flipping all of my leads around and everything along those lines. You can get a tester like this for, I think I spent $40 for it a few years ago. I don't remember. Now, when I have a lot of transistors that I'm uh, testing, um, this I'm just going to end up kind of going like this, you know, in, in, the, in the same order. And I'll always know, you know, where I'm at. And I can tell by new solder that it had been uh, fooled with. But if, if there's a whole bunch, you know, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually put a dot. I'll get a permanent marker and I'll put a dot on top of the transistor saying it's been tested. You know, maybe silver or something like that. Just, just to let me know what has been tested and what hasn't. And even if you only have a few, especially like with diodes, if it looks like, you know, you have some where it's a mirror image on the board. A lot of times it's a good idea. Just put a streak. You tested it so that way you can make sure you're not missing anything sometimes it's a little difficult to read a number on a part or the number when you try to do a search for it it just doesn't come up okay so so if you if you look right down here on the bottom which you probably aren't going to be able to see very well um, it says 520-5033-00 okay and that's the board number so you end up doing a search for it online and then you can get the schematics for it. Generally, generally on the board, you'll end up seeing things like, you know, D9, D10, you know, um, Qs, Q this, Q that, R this. Qs are generally transistors. D is usually a diode, R is a resistor. I have an SR2 and I have an SR1 here that I'm kind of having a hard time um, getting the part number cross reference. So we have SR1 right here, SR2. Okay, so I found them. So D9 is, D9 should be attached directly to one of these guys. There should be, okay, so we have a fuse there. Right here is D9. Okay, and this looks like it's being used kind of as a rectifier, these dots. So we have our SR2 and SR1, and it's saying that it's a 528008. And that is not what is on the part. But we found it. But that explains why it's not showing up as a transistor because even though it's got three leads, you can tell that it's actually a diode. So it's probably a current limiting diode, okay, that this is here. It's almost kind of like a, a current regulator. So we're going to end up uh, looking up that part number and ordering it. Okay, guys, so we've got our board here and I've already installed a new uh, power transistor. But we also have these guys we need to install. And got some right here. Basically we need to put some thermal, some thermal here. Sometimes they have like these little pieces of like uh, silicone that act as the uh, conductor. I'm going to be using some uh, paste here. Uh, something like that. This is the same type that you use on CPU or whatever. Um, just thermal paste. And this, I'm going to keep a little loose and tighten it after it goes on the uh, board here. The board, you'll see that it actually even shows you how it should be setting the uh, positioning. And we've got that. So basically, something along these lines. And I can go ahead and I can solder that in. And uh, after it's soldered, I can go ahead and tighten it. Um, people ask this a lot, how do you solder? Um, 
And essentially it's like this. You want to heat up the trace, but you also want to heat up the lead, so you're touching both. And then you end up running some solder um, and, you know, hitting the uh, soldering iron. And as long as you have the proper heat and the right amount of solder, you'll end up having a nice solder joint. Um, and you don't want to, you know, hold the heat there for too long because it could damage a component or it could damage the trace. Um, but you also don't want to hold it there not long enough because you could end up having a bad solder joint. When you um, are soldering, you also want to make sure that if you have traces on top, which this particular one doesn't have it, but if there were traces on top, you need to make sure that you add enough um, solder so it goes through and it, and, it, and it gets up on top, you know. But then afterwards you come through and you cut the, the, the tabs off here if you have any that are sticking up. And because the power transistor um, was causing these to blow, the, the fuse here, um, and probably, I don't, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it blew the hell out of that. Um, we need to replace that as well. There's what's known as a fast burning fuse and a slow burning fuse. Um, if you put a fast burning fuse and a slow burning fuse's uh, uh, holder, you can end up having blown fuses. If you end up putting a slow burning fuse and a fast burning fuse holder, you can end up having burnt up components. So it's really important that you put the right fuse in the right holder. Now these fuses, a lot of times, you can actually end up getting these, these fuses at places like uh, an auto parts store. Most of the voltage is the same. Most of the time they'll give you like a 250 volt, and it's just the amperage that changes. But anyway guys, that is that for this board. Um, and, you know, that, and you know, pretty much what I have shown here is a really good way um, to test, you know, simple boards like this on a component level where you're, you know, doing your diode checking, checking all those because it's one of the most likely uh, components to go out, transistors and diodes, those, you know, and then electrolytic capacitors, you know, so you test them and, you know, we've gone over that, we've, you know, we've tested all of these other um, transistors, you know, uh, we tested these transistors, we tested these other diodes, but we ended up testing this. Everything seems to be checking out. This should be good to go. I can call up the guy and say, come get your board because it's, it's ready to roll. Um, anyway, guys, that's that. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.